Hey folks, thanks so much for tuning in. And in this video, we're going to talk about wide drop bars, specifically ones that have flare like this. Uh, we're gonna talk about some characteristics that these bars have and how wide is too wide. Real quick, I do wanna ask a favor of you. If you haven't already done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna help us out a little bit more, consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. The Bikepacking Collective is a membership through bikepacking.com where you earn industry discounts, you're automatically entered to win monthly giveaways, and two times a year, shipped to your door, you get the Bikepacking Journal. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below so that you can learn more. I'm not gonna lie, I've only been using drop bars for a handful of years now, and that's mainly because the bikes that these are on have evolved and have been able to go off-road or go on gravel roads with relative ease. What we've seen with these bikes is wider tire clearance, longer wheelbases, and in general geometry that is more suited for off-road terrain. It's also been fascinating to see bike components built around these specific bikes. We've seen tires being designed, drivetrains being designed around gravel bikes, suspension forks, and yes, the drop bar. The drop bar has changed drastically, and it's all truly started with the width. The width of the drop bar is measured from basically this access point on this side to this side. This right here is a 500 millimeter drop bar. This is the Salsa Cow Chipper. So the width allows a little bit more control over steering. And it acts almost just similar to a regular flat bar on a mountain bike. It also aids in stability, especially when you're in the drops, but we'll get into that. The other thing it allows is more real estate. You have just more room to put cargo, your bags, a handlebar bag, stem bags, and things on the bar like GPS or a light. So another characteristic is flare, and flare is essentially the degree that the bar flares outward from the main part of the bar. So what this allows is more space because essentially it pushes the bar away from, say, a handlebar bag. But once you're in the drops like this, it just creates a ton of stability, not only when you're descending, but also when you're climbing, if you're trying to get out of the saddle and you're hammering. It's just a really nice, stable hand position. As far as the flare is concerned, this specific bar has a 24 degree flare, and that's the sweet spot for, for me in this cow chipper. Uh, the wood chipper has a little bit more flare. I think it's 34 degrees, and that's quite a bit. And when I'm that far out, I feel like I don't have as much control. So this is like the best middle ground. So the other thing about flare is there's a flared width. The flared width is the largest or the widest part of the bar. In this case, on the Salsa Cow Chipper, the width here is roughly 610 centimeters. So that's pretty wide. And that's just lends itself to being that much more stable. Another characteristic to note within these types of bars is the back sweep and the up sweep. So the back sweep, and you see this a lot in flat bars, is the amount of sweep or the degree of sweep that the bar comes back to you. And then up sweep is the amount of sweep the bar comes up. This bar doesn't have any sweep, but there are a ton of options out there. What it allows is a little bit more of an upright position, which lends itself to being a great bike packing specific bar because after hours or days on end, that definitely will add up. So having a little bit of up or back sweep can be beneficial. One of the last characteristics of these bars is the drop. And the drop varies on basically all bars, but the drop is the measurement from this point to this point. This I feel like is a little bit more of a personal preference. I found that this bar, this has I think 116 millimeters of drop. It's a very even drop. It gets me in the, the actual drops. I'm able to use the brake levers pretty easily. Whereas some shallower drops are a little bit easier to get in them. And because of the shallow nature, you almost wanna be in them a little bit more. And I find that with the, the Venture Max from Ritchie. So there are a few things that you need to know when you do go with a wider bar. First is because the width of the bar 
it creates a little bit more reach. You may want to go down a size or two on your stem. Typically I've run a 90 millimeter stem. I've gone back to an 80 and sometimes even a 70 depending on the bike. The other thing is bar wrap. Most tape that is out there will work with a 500 or 520 millimeter bar, but if you do go up to a 600 plus millimeter bar, and there are plenty of those out there now, you might need to consider getting a longer tape. And then the other thing is your brake line. So whether it's hydraulic or cable actuated, you might need to extend that length. So those are three things to consider when going with a wider bar. So I have been using the Carbon Cow Tripper in the 500 millimeter category for a while, been loving it. The Carbon has great vibration damping. I've also been using the Ritchie Venture Max XL, which is a 520 centimeter bar, but the flare width, I believe, is 646 centimeters. So it flares out quite a bit more, and I really have been loving that bar. Not to mention that bar comes with a kind of a smushed top part of the bar, which is more ergonomic on your hand, but it also allows you to get on your forearms and take a break from holding the bar itself. So there are a few other bars out there and we do have a great resource on all of these specific gravel drop bar mountain bike bars. And I will link that in the description below. The 50 or 52 centimeter is kind of the sweet spot for me, especially with this amount of flare. But if you are looking for that really wide option, crust towel rack or curve Walmer bar are good options for you. Far Arrow and Redshift Kitchen make a unique bar that comes with almost a arrow handle, which creates another hand position. So it's maximizing hand positions, arrow, and just comfort. And lastly, the Oyster Bar. Not to mention that's a fantastic name for a bar but it almost gives a new meaning to the word bar end. I'd be curious to know what you think. How wide is too wide? What characteristics would you like to see in a drop bar like this? Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to check those out. Thank you so much for tuning in and until next time, pedal further.